I actually ended up doing two sets of benchmarks here, an AMD and an, an NVIDIA one. Um, I chose the RX 6600, uh, it's like an RDNA 2 based sub 200 pounds graphics card, eight gigs of VRAM. Um, it's kind of beloved by many because it's been cheap for so long and it will play all of the games that are out there now. Yeah, obviously, there'll be compromises on resolution and such like, and ray tracing performance isn't great, but it is what it is. There's a lot of people that have bought that GPU that love it. I also included an NVIDIA GPU, uh, perhaps not quite so beloved and certainly not as cheap as the RX 6600. That's the RTX 3050. I did try the 3060 actually just on Cyberpunk. It's way ahead of um, Panther Lake, but 3050, <laughs> interesting results. Um, let's go back. Cyberpunk, native resolution. Resolution 1080p, ultra settings, but with RT reflections and sun shadows added because we can. And mm -hmm. um, very, very interesting results here. The 6600 is basically neck and neck with Panther Lake. Um, RTX 3050, it's faster, but 14% faster, which isn't exactly a game changing uh, enhancement there. Um, and again, that's really, really impressive, I'd say. Um, uh, you know, you basically cyberpunk with ray tracing, playable frame rates um, and comparable to entry level discrete graphics. I'd say that's a, a big, big win. Um, you know, add in and add in your um, uh, upscaling and you're actually in very good frame rate territory. And actually, let's do that right now um, where we've done FSR three performance. Um, for um, the 6600 and the DLSS CNN model performance mode, RTX 3050 there. All of these are running with a 9, uh, 960 by 540 internal resolution, upscale to 1080p. This time uh, the 6600 does stretch its legs. It's 19% faster, 27% faster for DLSS on the 3050 there. Um, yeah, really, really cool stuff, I'd say. I mean, um, uh, you are sort of within the the, the ballpark, so to speak, um, but it does look as though the upscaling cost is probably heavier than the um, discrete graphics there. Um, let's talk about Doom, Doom the Dark Ages, native 1080p ultra settings. We already established 33.33 FPS for um, Panther Lake, a 13, well, 12.6% uh, performance advantage for RX 6600 there. Interestingly, though, the 3050 is uh, slower than the 6600, which I didn't see coming, but there it is. Mm. Uh, mm. It's 9.5% faster than um, Panther Lake. But uh, Oliver, still kind of in the ballpark here, and that, that's pretty exciting stuff, I'd say. Yeah, on this title with, rel I mean, relatively light ray tracing demands, I'm sure even relative to Cyberpunk could have to imagine here. Um, but this is yeah. this is actually running really really well, and this is a title that I mean I'm used to seeing on handhelds in that like ultra portable stripped back handheld configuration. That's not so flattering. That wouldn't be necessary here. Although I'm not sure exactly what visual settings improvements you get going up to ultra here versus high, Alex. <laughs> I'm not sure if they resolve that, mm -hmm. but, but previously it was kind of a, a placebo difference at best, if not actually making a difference at all. At worst, I'm not exactly it was, sure. Uh, it was. Yeah. For the RT reflections, you get higher reflections. Okay. That's the main big difference, as well as the um, the LOD is higher. Right? Okay, so small differences. In game world. That's yeah. about it. Smaller differences. Yeah. yeah, but I think, you know, it sets the stage for actually very, very impressive results using just super resolution al alone and maybe dropping mm -hmm. back to your optimized settings, Alex. Right. Um, you know, you should be well in, well ahead of 60 there and you aren't having to use the, um, uh, the the portable slash handheld potato setting mode there. You can actually be lavish yourself in some uh, settings of luxury. Um, let's complete the uh, discrete graphics comparisons by looking at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, it sounds as though you were goaded into doing it, Alex. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> um, segment one. Uh, interesting stuff here, um, 42.64 FPS that we established on Panther Lake. We were about 38% faster on the RX 6600, but this was a, a case where Strix Halo was also quite a bit faster. Um, um, and, and looking at the RTX 3050 there, 19.5% uh, ahead there. So this is kind of like the the worst case scenario of, of the three segments there. Uh, I'm wondering whether the RT shadows might have something to do with that because um, it was a very early implementation. But even so, segment two is where Alex typically uh, sort of thinks that's more representative of the gameplay experience. Oh, yeah. And um, in that regard, we're actually seeing uh, from a 39.6 baseline uh, set by Panther Lake, 
6600 is just 10.1 percent faster it's, you know not much in it at all and it's only 12 percent faster on the 3050 there so i think it's fair to say that we are sort of looking at the advent of integrated graphics without having to do you know strix halo levels of craziness um actually encroaching into entry level desktop gpu territory which i think is absolutely fantastic um the results open out a bit in segment three um 37.12 fps average with panther lake 15 percent faster on the 6600 um the 3050 is 21 percent faster um the beginning of that benchmark you're quite right alex you're looking at the sky and you know um you're getting stupidly high frame rates so right. what i've actually done is cropped the area of the benchmark to the bit where the gpu is actually under load <laughs> so i do think that is actually an, a decent benchmark as opposed to um one sky that, view that, that is looking at the sky and, <laughs> and, and therefore skewing the average um summary oliver i mean i'm i'm really impressed by this again bearing in mind that you know you had your hw info um, CPU package monitor going, and it wasn't really look going past 65 watts at all. Uh, you should be able to do this entirely from battery on a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, you should be able to get like an hour of play on like a 100 watt hour battery at least. Um, and this is on stupendous settings. So mm -hmm. yeah, pretty impressive, right? Yeah, these aren't necessarily the settings that I would use. Obviously, for kind of cross-platform <laughs> comparability, it's very important to have like some measures that we can compare across vendors. But of course, the real advantage here is getting that XCSS uh, super resolution in particular, and also frame generation, especially if you happen to have a 120 hertz display or above combined with uh, one, of the, one of these chips, should be quite compelling. Um, but getting mm -hmm. roughly RTX 3050 performance is quite Impressive. Obviously, Intel's own guidance suggests an RTX 4050, but of course, that's the mobile part um, as implemented in shipping systems at relatively low wattages. So this, I mean, compared to a low-end discrete GPU from five years ago, I mean, that's not great in a lot of contexts, but certainly for a thin and light laptop, that's very good. For a handheld, mm -hmm. I mean, that's stupendous. <laughs> that's much better than the performance level that we're getting out of almost anything else, except for a comically... Uh, under wattage <laughs> uh, Strix Halo part, which is not going to be appropriate for many scenarios in terms of cost, but also the overall size of that package is like quite large for a mobile system, prohibitively large in many cases. Um, but yeah, at 40 watts or below in an ultra portable or a handheld, this could be really cool. Again, we did, did not see that behavior specifically, but it could be uh, really good. As long as we're keeping the display target within reason, like I think 1080p is a good resolution for this part. Um, and as long as we use upscaling, and as long we, as we have sufficient VRAM, but of course, given that this is going to be integrated into systems with, you know, probably uh, 24 or 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5, in many cases, LPDDR5X, that should be something that's a lot more achievable than we would see with an entry-level discrete GPU, which might only have six gigabytes of VRAM or eight gigabytes of VRAM. In this sense, you could probably push a high-end configuration of this device uh, beyond that allocation of VRAM significantly within Windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what's your summary there, Alex? Of everything we've seen so far, I think the, the most compelling aspect is the image quality you're getting at this performance. So as Oliver said, these are just benchmarks to give us cross comparison um, data points. But in reality, when you load this up, you're going to throw on XCSS because there's no good reason to not <laughs> when a low power device in, in this aspect. And honestly, I think you're going to want to turn on frame gen in there too, based on mm -hmm. the performance we saw of it and the titles that are supporting XCSS frame gen. And you're gonna get a transformatively better experience, I would say, than and like, you know, Strix Point or even on an image quality perspective, I think you're gonna be getting better image quality than a Strix Halo device at similar uh, settings. And yeah, a little bit more performance there, of course, on the Strix Halo part, but that is a whole other aspect here. Uh, one thing that is the big question mark over all this, we did not directly benchmark the CPU, but does the CPU hold up mm -hmm. uh, and you know feed that GPU as much as it should in all titles to get a good 60 FPS base frame rate? Mm -hmm. We don't know that at the, I couldn't load up something like the Outer Worlds 2 in that time. I didn't think I would want it, <laughs> but you know, that, cause that would be just a CPU bench, but you know, like how does this fare in a title like that, which I think is a bad title for CPU performance, mm -hmm. right? Is this going to be something good or are you just going to not want to play on this device? Kind of like you wouldn't want to play on a handheld device uh, for a lot of the other vendors in such a game. Uh, so those are things we still have to ask and that'll be answered hopefully around review time when we have one of these devices in front of us and we can say, 
okay, GPU is like this. We already kind of know that, but CPU, what is that like? 